Why are there dozens of ghost cities in China? You may have seen abandoned cities and empty buildings in many movies or web series, but you rarely get to see this in real life. But that doesn't mean that there isn't such a thing. You must be thinking that where would such buildings be? Um, maybe in countries that are not developed. You'll be surprised after knowing this, that it is China, which is a very developed country in the world. China has the highest number of abandoned buildings and ghost cities in the world. This sounds very strange to hear, doesn't it? So welcome back to Top Viral, and today, in the next few minutes, I'll take you to China, where we'll explore ghost cities. So sit back and relax, and enjoy the video. If you drive for an hour or two outside of Shanghai or Beijing, you'll find something strange. The cities are still big and modern, with tall buildings. In general, they are also in good shape, but unlike the Tier 1 cities that are full of people, they are mostly empty. These are the ghost cities of China. There is a lot of proof that they exist. In 2013, CBS's 60 Minutes aired a segment about China's ghost towns. The segment began with Leslie Stahl standing on a major road during rush hour with almost no cars in sight. But since Evergrande's $300 billion debt has brought China's real estate market to the forefront of the world's attention, ghost cities have again become a topic of interest. They show how much China relies on real estate as a driver of economic growth and how much it thinks real estate is a safe investment, but it's hard to say how many there are. Lee Gan teaches economics at Texas A&M University and runs the Survey and Research Center for China Household Finance at Qingdu Southwestern University of Finance and Economics. He is also thought to be one of the most knowledgeable people about China's housing market. He couldn't tell how many ghost towns there were in China when the media asked. I don't know what the word ghost town means, he said. Therefore, I'm not sure if there's a number. So, what are the ghost towns of China? Ordos New Town, also known as Kangbashi, and Inner Mongolia may be the most well-known of China's ghost cities. In the early 2000s, the city was planned to eventually house a million people, but that estimate was later reduced to 300,000. However, just 100,000 individuals lived there in 2016. According to Nikkei, Kangbashi was able to attract residents after China relocated several of its top schools to the area. Kai Kammerer, a photographer, came to China in 2015 to investigate ghost cities. His photographs depict unending rows of high-rises with little evidence of human life. They are photographs that might remind people of what cities around the world looked like when the coronavirus pandemic hit. These empty homes account for a sizable portion of China's massive housing industry, which is twice the size of the U.S. residential market and was valued at $52 trillion in 2019. According to the most current China Household Finance Survey, which Gan manages, 21% of homes, or 65 million, were empty in 2017, according to the Wall Street Journal. That many empty units could fit all of France's people. But China's ghost towns are different from those in the U.S. and Japan, where homes in different states of abandonment and decay have led to the name. They haven't been left behind, they're just empty. Experts said that these abandoned cities are unique to China. How did China end up with so much land that isn't being used? First, you should know that China's ghost cities are not cities that are falling apart. Instead, they are full of new homes that were bought as investments. They are also a sign that supply and demand are not in sync. A senior lecturer in Chinese and East Asian business at King's College in London, Shin Sun, told Insider that the fact that these homes are empty means that they have been sold to investors and buyers but are not being lived in by the owners or renters. Soon said that on the supply side, the government makes a lot of money by renting land to developers. He said this gives the government a strong reason to help development instead of stopping it. The Economist said in January that China starts building 15 million new homes every year. This is five times as many as the U.S. and Europe put together. In addition to the government pushing for growth and increasing supply, there's also the rate of urbanization in China. The World Bank says that, as of last year, 61% of China's people lived in cities, which is up from 35.8% just 20 years earlier. Experts said that China's way of measuring the rate of urbanization was flawed and that one of those flaws had to do with areas that had been reclassified. When rural areas became urban again, the people who live there already have homes. He said even though they never moved and won't need a new place to live, they still add to the number of people living in cities. The expert said, part of the problem is that China overestimated how many people would want to move from the country to the city. Even though the Evergrande crisis is on the horizon, China has ways to reduce risk, such as stopping home sales. Its website says that Evergrande has more than 1,300 projects in 280 cities in China that is home to more than 12 million people. 
but Evergrande also owes $300 billion, which makes it the most indebted company in the world. It hasn't delivered 1.6 million apartments yet, and it keeps missing bond payments. Even though Evergrande is a big company with a lot of debt, it is only responsible for a small part of China's housing problems. The expert said, Evergrande has something to do with the problem of empty homes, but you can't blame them for it. They still have a small share of the market in China. Experts said that Evergrande and the vacancy rate were both parts of the same big problem. In 2017, Bloomberg said that Beijing's worst-case scenario would be if people rushed to sell their second homes if there were cracks in the market. This would cause prices to go down in a downward spiral. According to the expert, this was what was happening in China right now. He said it wasn't, but not because the market isn't broken. China has the power to stop a deal. The number of years you have to own a home can be changed by the government. Or if the prices are too low, the government won't give you a certificate of sale. That's what's going on right now. The price won't drop much, but the number of transactions will drop by a huge amount, he said. The sale won't happen. By doing this, they can avoid making it look like the price dropped a lot. They can stop the accident. Gan said that putting a stop to home sales could hurt people who need to sell their homes to get cash. He said, real estate makes up a huge part of people's wealth. The liquidity sellers will lose out if they need that money for school, health problems, or retirement. Households with only one home are thought to be at the most risk, along with those who sell liquidity. People who only own one home have some risk because prices are high and their incomes are low, Gan said. Many of them get the money for their down payment from friends and family, not from banks. The risk of default is low for these families unless a massive, unprecedented economic crisis causes a lot of people to lose their jobs. This is not the case for wealthy families who have money invested in second and third homes. But if that worst case scenario doesn't happen, the risk of default isn't that high. On a larger scale, Evergrande is a threat to the Chinese economy as a whole. Experts say that Evergrande's debt problems could have an effect on other Chinese property developers and could lead to a new wave of defaults. The Chinese real estate company Fantasia missed a payment deadline for $206 million just last week. Reuters said that a letter from September 2020 that got out shows that the company owes at least 128 banks money. Another risk is that the Evergrande crisis could change how China thinks about real estate as a safe investment. When the real estate market makes up 29% of the country's gross domestic product, this is a problem. The government depends a lot on people continuing to invest in real estate. So, if the bubble bursts, it will hurt people's trust in real estate and make them think that real estate isn't the best way to keep and make money. That means that if the housing market slows down, it will hurt economic growth and government finances. So, this was all about this video. I hope you liked the information given in the video, and if you have anything on your mind, feel free to comment below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to get more videos like this. Also, please hit the bell icon to get the notification of the latest updates on the channel. And thanks for watching!